everybody. Welcome back to Planet X News. Ladies and gentlemen, I've had so many emails over the course of the last couple of weeks asking me for some more detailed information on the Cascadia subduction zone and what could possibly happen to the Pacific Northwest. Specifically, Vancouver, Seattle, and Portland, Oregon. Well folks, it just so happens that just a few days ago the state of Washington and NOAA just came out with brand new simulations regarding what can possibly happen during this type of event. So let's go back in time a little bit and let's discuss what has happened in the past. Now the biggest tsunami and earthquake happened back in 1700. I believe it was January 26th, the year 1700. A magnitude 9.2, I believe. It was estimated between 8.7 and 9.2 hit the Juan de Fuca fault. That caused massive earthquakes inland and also a massive tsunami. Now, fortunately, back in 1700, that area, those areas, were only populated by Native Americans. And how do we know all of this? Well, the Native Americans actually documented what occurred. And we all know how the tsunami waves propagate across the Pacific Ocean in an event like this uh, on the Cascadia and the Juan de Fuca faults. So as that wave pushed all the way across the Pacific Ocean, the Japanese also documented this event and it did create a lot of destruction. But we're not talking about destruction like we would see in modern times. So what you're going to see scrolling across your screen throughout this video is the simulations that have just come out from NOAA and the state of Washington has published this information. Now folks, here is one of the biggest problems that I have with the entire scenario of a Cascadia and Juan de Fuca event. I have studied this for many, many years, and I do continue to study this matter. Each and every month, I look for brand new data, reports, papers, anything coming out that could help me help you. So, over the course of the last couple of years, I've done many, many videos on this type of event. Here's the bottom line. The statistics that are now coming out are just absolutely horrendous. And preparation. Preparation is the key. But here's the problem. Government. Government gets in the way of this preparation. Now I'm not talking about FEMA and I'm not talking about, you know, little local governments because they are actually doing their part for preparation. But if we would have looked at this 30 years ago, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, and these major preparations would have started to take place, things might turn out a little bit better. The bottom line is, an event like Cascadia, uh, a 9.0 earthquake on that fault, no matter how much preparation you're going to have, you're going to have a lot of destruction. Now, dealing with cities like Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, the small little town of Seaside, Oregon, and Vancouver, folks, these are built up cities with skyscrapers and millions and millions of people. There are also hundreds and hundreds of older structures, 
brick structures that will just not survive. But politicians and government has gotten in the way of funding to help prepare some of these buildings so they don't literally just topple over. Now, I continue to do research on this subject matter just about once a month. Like I said, I go through as many reports and studies as I can possibly find. And one of the most recent studies that has come out is just absolutely terrifying. I mean, for me, I would not live in any of these areas from Vancouver, Seattle to Portland, even in Northern California they will actually see the effects of this. The more research that I've done, I have actually seen how many people will be affected by an event like this. We're not just talking about a few hundred thousand. We're talking about millions. We're talking about thousands and thousands of buildings that will literally be destroyed washed away, toppled over, and some of the newest studies that have come out give estimates of casualties from anywhere between 10 to 20,000. Now, that does seem like a very low number considering the millions of people that live in these three areas. So the fact of the matter is, <clears throat> I think these numbers may be a little low. Now, let's jump back in time a little bit more. Let's move forward from the great event in 1700. Let's move to the event in Chile in 1960. Massive earthquake right off of shore, devastating the area, producing waves 40, 50, 60 feet high, a lot of devastation and a lot of loss of life. Now, let's jump forward a little bit more. Let's talk about the big tsunami and earthquake that hit Japan. We've all seen the videos of these tsunami waves coming in and literally washing out everything. Again, loss of life, very high. Destruction, very, very high. And Japan is one of the leading countries in earthquake technology. But when you have an event like this, all of the technology in the world is not going to save you. So, we've seen these videos of Japan and they've played over and over and over again on YouTube and Facebook and we've seen them on Twitter. We've seen them everywhere. Now, let's jump back to the United States. So it's been about 320 years since this earthquake and tsunami in the year 1700, January 26. This tsunami came in at nighttime. Now, there's a big problem. You have millions of people asleep in their homes, their apartments, and all of a sudden, a 9.0 or even greater earthquake occurs on the Juan de Fuca Fault. What happens? Well, naturally, a lot of these people will be awoken by the massive shaking. One of the major areas that will have catastrophic, catastrophic destruction will be parts of Northern Oregon and Seattle. You know, if you look at Seattle in general, it's literally on the water. And as you see these simulations rolling by, you can see the devastation. So now all of a sudden, at night, you're going to try and evacuate millions of people. Where are they going to go? Roads will be washed out. Buildings will literally be falling over. 
where is everybody going to go? What is the major solution to all of this? Well, I've talked to a lot of people online. I, I, I didn't realize how many subscribers I have that live in these three areas. And I constantly, constantly get emails from these folks. And the bottom line is, the answer is to move away or move out of these areas. That's the grand solution. But not everybody can just pick up and leave. That takes money, that takes a residence, that takes a job, that takes relocation factors that not everybody has. So again, what do we do? That question is just so open-ended. I think that it is one of the biggest threats that we have here in this country. And let's not forget one thing. Let's move away from the threat to the United States. Now that tsunami hits, whether it be in the daytime or the nighttime, either way, it's going to be a catastrophic event. As those waves propagate across the Pacific Ocean, Hawaii is going to be right in the path of these tsunami waves. And then, once again, the poor folks in Japan. Now, I was looking at some simulations of what happened during the Chilean earthquake in 1960. That was one hell of an earthquake. The tsunami waves made their way all the way from the coastal areas of Chile all the way to the small island nation of New Zealand. Now, today, in today's times, we have the tsunami warning buoys. But folks, the more and more I investigate this matter, the more and more I see that even having a slight early warning system is just not going to be sufficient to warn and evacuate millions of people. Now, dealing with an issue on the Juan de Fuca, yes, those buoys would show the tsunami warning. And that would give people in Hawaii and Japan a time to prepare and get away from the coastline. But what does that actually do for the people that live in Vancouver, Seattle, and Portland, Oregon? My personal opinion, it doesn't do too much. Because the fact of the matter is, all of these buildings in all three locations were built many, many years before geologists and scientists actually understood the dangers of what is lurking below in the Cascadia subduction zone and the Juan de Fuca fault. So, folks, you know, people ask for advice. Well, Scott, what would you do? Well, knowing what I know, knowing what I've researched over many, many years, I would do everything in my power to move. And again, for a lot of people, that is just not the answer. So, we kind of go back to the very beginning. How much damage is going to happen? Where can I go? Well, folks, the more and more I look at these simulations and the more and more I look at these studies, we're talking about thousands of buildings that will literally be destroyed, toppled over. And the reason being would not always come from the rush and surge of water, but what is actually in the water. 
large shipping containers, cars, trucks, buses, big, large pieces of debris. They would literally impact these buildings and just destroy them. There was also information that was put out in a study that was talking about the welds on some of the steel skeletal framings of tall skyscrapers. These buildings were built 20, 30, 40 years ago. They will not survive. What happens to the emergency management teams like the police and the fire departments and the ambulance services? Well, another study was conducted showing that 70%, 70% of these emergency services will not be available. Number one, because their buildings will be destroyed. Their emergency vehicles will be destroyed. And the roads and bridges will also be destroyed. So, who is going to rescue you? Who is going to help you? Well, the way I see it, folks, <clears throat> the only person, the only people that are going to help you in a time like this is you. You have to decide whether or not you want to live on this type of ticking time bomb. You know, for many, many years, people always talk about the San Andreas Fault. Sure, the San Andreas Fault would cause a lot of destruction. However, over the course of the last 20 years, cities like Los Angeles have retrofitted buildings to withstand a lot of these earthquakes. A recent report that I read on that subject matter is showing that almost 90% of buildings, tall skyscraper buildings, have been retrofitted. Now, they enacted laws and ordinances to get this done. But it just seems that in the states of Oregon, and Washington, and even up in Vancouver, politicians, lawmakers, people in the communities that, that actually run the communities, they're dragging their feet. What is the problem? You have millions and millions of people at stake. Here's another major factor. Another study that I just recently read shows that almost all of the hospitals that would be in the locations of these earthquakes and this tsunami surge would be completely destroyed. So where do you take the injured? Another big problem. So again, the big question is for all of you, that live in these areas. What do you do? You know, it's not a matter of having flashlights and batteries and, and uh, you know, backup food and water to drink. This is literally running for your life. Yes, running with your feet because you're not going to be driving a car. The, the studies that I've seen and some of the simulations that I've seen, we're talking about massive devastation. Roads, impassable. Bridges, collapsing. Buildings, collapsing. Massive pieces of debris coming at you 30, 40 miles per hour. So how are you going to dodge a full-size car or truck? And since these are coastal communities, all of the marinas, all of the boats, what happens to those boats? They all start washing into shore, devastating the buildings. And we've seen this firsthand in what happened in Japan. Folks, I hope 
for anybody watching this video that this is an actual wake-up call. Maybe, maybe, just start looking for a way to get out of harm's way completely before an event like this even happens. Scientists keep saying that it's well overdue, that an event like this happens every 300 years. Well, it's been 320 years. 320. They say that the odds of this happening within the next 50 years is one in seven. Folks, take it from an ex-gambler. Those are bad odds, especially when you're talking about your life and the lives of your family members, your wife, your husband, and your children. So no matter how you prepare, it's probably not going to be good enough. So moving your way, moving yourself away from these shoreline disasters would be the key. I just posted um, an article on the Planet X News website just yesterday, and scientists are already stating that on the East Coast, that people should be moving away from the coastal areas, and that would also uh, that would also be for the West Coast. This was a topic of sea level rise and an issue with ice melt in Greenland. The report said that if you had a 25% loss of um, sea ice, or excuse me, uh, a 25% decrease in ice melt in Greenland, that the ocean levels would rise so drastically that coastal areas would be just completely inundated and flooded. And we've heard this time and time and time again. But is anybody doing anything about it? No. Actually, more people are flooding to the coast. No pun intended. But people are actually moving close to the shore. That's not good. So, I guess the moral of the whole video is try to stay away from these coastal areas, whether it be on the east coast of the United States, whether it be in the Gulf of Mexico, or whether it be on the west coast. Try to do something to move yourself, move your family away from these areas. You know, after reading this, this last report talking about how overdue this fault eruption is. So right now it's about 20 years overdue. It could happen at any time. And what would you do? What would you do? You really don't have any choices. Wherever you're at, at the time of this event, is probably where you may take your last breath. Not trying to fear monger here, but the facts are the facts. Seattle will be absolutely inundated with floodwaters. And here's something else, folks. We always think of earthquakes lifting the land. So we have the Cascadia Fault and we have the North American plate. Well, the North American plate is, is actually bending right on top as these two plates move against each other. Well, they're kind of locked in position now. So here's what one of the reports stated, that that locking mechanism, as the North American plate springs upward like this, that would cause the massive tsunami. But what about inland? What about inland? What happens there? Now, some of these reports and simulations were saying that the land inland 
would not rise from an earthquake, it would literally sink. It would sink so fast within a few minutes that water would literally just pour right in. So what happens then? Where do you go? It's kind of not like the earthquakes that you see in Southern California, where you see big cracks and fissures open up, like what we saw in Ridgecrest and out there in the desert. This is a totally, totally different monster in the Pacific Northwest. We're probably talking about a massive amount of liquefaction of just the ground liquefying and disappearing and sinking. So even if it sank one meter or even three meters, all of the water rushing in would just literally fill it up like a fishbowl. One of the scientists stated that the whole entire Seattle region is kind of like a bowl of jello. So Seattle sits on this bowl of jello. And if a magnitude earthquake like a 9.0 struck on the Juan de Fuca fault, it would literally shake the entire region. But that area of Seattle that kind of like sits on the top of this bowl of jello, shake a bowl of jello, and you will see the ripple effects rise all the way to the top. So Seattle, well, it would probably be completely wiped out. The same would go for the city of Portland, Oregon, and the small town of Seaside, Oregon. And Vancouver? Vancouver would have the same serious problems. So again, we have millions and millions of people at risk. What is the government doing? Preparedness? FEMA? What's FEMA going to do? What is FEMA going to do when there is massive devastation? Just picture what happened in Japan, but modify it with hundreds and hundreds of skyscraper buildings. Dog, knock it off, dog. <laughs> but anyways, folks, that's where we're at with Cascadia and the Juan de Fuca. It's not a matter of how prepared you are. It is a sheer matter of your location, where you live. There's no way around it. And again, you can be prepared all you want. You can have all of the food and all of the water and all of the flashlights and batteries that you could possibly store. But how are you going to take it with you when you're trying to outrun a tsunami? when buildings are collapsing around you. What are you going to do if you live in a 15-story high-rise apartment and this strikes at nighttime and the electric goes out and the elevators don't work and the building is falling down underneath you? So individual preparedness, I think, is really not the answer. The true, the true answer is get the hell off of these coastal areas if you can. If you're that worried about it, start making the changes. Make the changes today if you can. Because no matter how many videos that you watch on YouTube about the Cascadia subduction zone and the Juan de Fuca and the devastation, it's not going to change anything. Okay, the fact of the matter is, one day, someday soon, this is going to occur. And if you are one of those millions of people that live in these areas, look, you know me, folks, I don't sugarcoat shit and call it candy. The facts are the facts you're probably not going to make it. 
that's a fact. As I stated in the, in the beginning of this video, that they have these death tolls that ranged between 10 and 20,000 people. But yet we have millions of people living in these areas. Millions. I think their numbers may be off. And again, if you go back and you look at the videos from what happened in Japan and just tweak that a little bit for what can happen here on the west coast of the United States with these three large cities, with all of these skyscraper buildings, nothing has been retrofitted. Just think, that death toll of 10 to 20,000 people could end up being 100,000, if not 200,000. Nobody can really say, nobody could really put a mark on that. But for all of you that have asked for my take once again on Cascadia and the Juan de Fuca Fault and these three city locations, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, listen folks, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. It is a no-brainer and it is a no-win situation. Mother Nature, Mother Earth, much more powerful than we are. And the other big factor is Mother Earth has the element of surprise. So when something like this occurs, we're probably not going to have any warning whatsoever. Probably no warning of the earthquake. One of the last reports that I read just this morning stated that there will always be moderate earthquakes, magnitude 2, 3, 4, and 5s on the Juan de Fuca. But there will be no signaling of this large, catastrophic 8, 9, possibly even getting up towards a 10 magnitude earthquake. That's how much pressure is building. A lot of you know and have heard Dutch since talk about this over and over and over again. So the ball's in your court. You know the risks of living in these areas. Now it's up to you to change that or take the risk. That's all that there is to it. You know, folks, we see things changing very, very rapidly here on our planet. Each and every day, we have issues going on out in our inner solar system. We have issues with the sun. We have major issues with our weather. Hell, we just had a major storm come out of nowhere and blow through the Pittsburgh area last night. Two days before that, major storm just erupted out of nowhere, caused a lot of damage. But this isn't just happening here where I live, it's happening around the world. So again, you can be prepared, but for something like Cascadia and the Juan de Fuca event, folks, I don't really think that you could be prepared for something like that. Just getting away from that danger would be the best idea. <laughs> that would be the best plan. That would be my advice to all of you that have emailed me and inboxed me and you've asked my opinion on this. Folks, if you just looked at these simulations rolling across your screen, that is information enough to make these decisions. I know a lot of you just can't financially do this. So, as the old saying goes, you may have to ride out that storm. And if you do, God be with you. God be with you, because it is going to be one hell of a ride. This is Scott from Planet X News. 
Thank you for watching, folks. Be safe. Take care.